Hello and welcome back in another episode of Raven Art Paintings. This time we're gonna paint the werewolf. Uh, I, was, I was hoping to put this clip on the Halloween, unfortunately, you know, lack of time, uh, but there we go. A reference card, uh, again, a cool graphic, but doesn't give too much indication, so I played by ear, so I decided to have a kind of like a pale grey uh, skin. Uh, with the fur with kind of a brownish uh, to yellow uh, color and the kind of rock stand on the field of grass. Uh, the model itself was primed with the uh, gray primer all around and then the white from uh, uh, the top and as we did the uh, previous uh, one we're gonna really appreciate in it uh, before we actually start uh, putting the the colors uh, on it so uh, our first uh, layer we're gonna shade in with the noon oil and we cover the whole model uh, and the base uh, as well And once you cover the whole lot, you clean your brush, same brush that you apply the paint, uh, it can be a little bit damp and then we remove the excess of the paint from the, you know, the areas that we will be uh, highlighting. And this is, this is the first step uh, result. And once that dry off, then you can apply some uh, paint. So first of all, I got the Rhinox height with a tiny bit of the Rapstone Globe, and we're gonna uh, paint the all the stripes. It's like a kind of like armor stripes. There is few of them on uh, the hands, and then there is another uh, couple of stripes across his uh, chest. So all of those we're gonna paint uh, with our kind of uh, dark green, dark brown uh, color tone. Now in our next step we're gonna switch to XV88 and we're gonna paint the the rope uh, belt, let's call it, and. Uh, the reason I'm doing those first, it's usually easier to, to get the thin stripes doing it first and then cover the, the surrounding areas. Uh, it's easier correction if you're gonna get a mistake. Uh, so uh, I'll try to apply that rule, you know, for, for those narrow stripes. Uh, next we get into the red tone, so Mephiston red. I decided to put some nice red accent. Uh, most of the colors will be pretty much flat, so the, the tone is of grey and, uh, and brown, so the, the, the nice wee red stripe will put a bit of a contrast there. So we use the Mephiston red for that purpose. And then of course we will be brightening uh, that up uh, during the highlight stage later on with, uh, with the brighter, brighter red, uh, red tones. Uh, and again, once you painted that, you know, you know, you you might not go too heavily with the paint. You know, those recesses might stay a little bit darker. Then there is a kind of like a wee bandage on the on his leg, and I decided to put the uh, screaming skull on those. And again, you know, we we want to have that uh, shading uh, coming through, so you know water your paint a bit and uh, and you do not necessarily want to cover it uh, the whole lot at this point when we have in this tone we might uh, paint his uh, 
uh, teeth and at the same time we're gonna put the small tiny eyeballs in the eye sockets some of you already mentioned in the comments that uh, you know those clips get more ambience in uh, with the uh, with the witcher 3 uh, music so thanks again cg project red for letting me do that and again if you have uh, any wishes for another monster uh, to be painted next uh, just let me know in a comment i'll do my best and uh, and we'll see what the future bring into that. Uh, back to our uh, model, uh, the wee clothing, clothing uh, let's call it a skirt. Uh, I used the Scrag Brown and again you know I did water the paint uh, a bit. I don't want that uh, uh, to be too thick. We want that bit, uh, those recesses to remain uh, darker. Uh, now we're switching over to the ashen gray and we're gonna paint the the rock uh, that he's uh, standing on again you know the rock usually kind of like a grayish color and the skin will be uh, of the world will be gray but I decided to use two different gray colors just to, to uh, difference in between uh, those two uh, the tongue and the mouth, my usual stuff, which is the Bookman's Glow, and it will work perfect uh, for that, I believe. Just try to be neat, you know, there is really gums uh, visible, especially on the, on the upper jar. Uh, now we're switching to the pure Rhinox hide and we got in our dry brushing uh, in the hand and I decided to dry brush the whole fear uh, of our werewolf first of all with with our uh, Rhinox hide remember once you do the uh, noon oil pre-shading you know all the recesses are quite dark already uh, so just uh, just cover the whole lot then maybe with as I did with the smaller brush there is a wee fewer part on his elbows uh, so that's you know the smaller brush might be handy for that and again we get a bit of a baller brown and go over uh, the the fewer part again we're not gonna uh, press the brush too hard we want uh, those two colors like the rhinox height and the baller brown mixing uh, a bit uh, once that done i have put a uh, layer of the rakeland flesh shade wash uh, so it will bring a kind of a nice brownie uh, brownie finish and blend those uh, paints uh, together now we put in a bit of that wash on the skirt as well uh, we'll let it dry the fur a little bit and then we're gonna mix a bit of a noon oil on the edges of that fur while the previous one is still wet but start already uh, settling we're gonna apply uh, so those areas that they will be nearby the skin uh, will be a little bit uh, darker and uh, uh, I do a bit of a correction on the nose as well we want to make that uh, those those holes a little bit darker We do the same process with the skirting, so we add a little bit of the Agrax Earth Shade, mainly in the recesses and around those roping. We want uh, uh, those to stay a little bit darker. Uh, the rock underneath, once was painted again, you know, I put another layer of the of the black wash, which is the noon oil, and then we will uh, do a bit of a dry brushing on it uh, later on. 
Now we get into a bit of a storm vermin fur mixed with the Kislev uh, flesh, and that's pretty much uh, like 50 50, maybe a little bit more gray. And that's uh, our uh, that's our main skin color. So we're gonna paint all over the skin parts of our werewolf. And again, you know, the, don't uh, uh, put your paint uh, too thick. Make sure you you thin it properly. So uh, uh, the the pre shading that we done earlier on will come through a little bit at this stage. Next, we're gonna mix some Abaddon Black with the uh, Sotek Green, and we're gonna use uh, that mix to paint uh, our werewolf uh, gloves. And then I decided to put a, a little bit more wash on our uh, skin. So I uh, did, uh, I got the noon oil, uh, however I add uh, uh, a bit of a medium into it. So it's one part of the wash and two part of the medium. I want to have that wash pretty transparent. Uh, just remember that this mixture would, uh, is drying very slowly. Uh, so you probably would need a break if uh, if you uh, repeat that step uh, and uh, uh, before you start working this model make sure that you know this this is completely uh, dry because you might ruin the, the whole process yeah and this is how will the model uh, look uh, before we move to our, to the next step, which is the the highlighting. So the the mini dries off, and we're gonna start working uh, with few extra bits. So first of all, I put a bit of a red tone on his mouth just to shade the the tongue and the gums. And then. We get our store vermin fur and we do a bit of a dry brushing on that uh, on that rock and we'll be highlighting with uh, 
mix in the, the storm very fewer with white in a couple of stages. You can see our two different uh, tones of of our grey highlighting color. As you probably noticed, I didn't paint the rest of the base. I do it later on, and uh, and again, majority of it will be covered with the grass. So that was the reason. Uh, next, uh, I get back to our scrag brown, and we do a bit of a dry brushing on the. Sure. Our next uh, highlighting color will be the Valor Brown. Uh, which is a kind of like a browny yellow and again very very uh, gentle touches uh, mainly on the on the center of the uh, of the fear uh, and uh, again make sure you uh, remove most of the paint from your brush we want a little bit of the pigment uh, remain in the brush, so we're not gonna go over too much. Uh, our final uh, highlighting tone is mixing uh, a wee bit of the of the screaming uh, skull to to our brown brown, but again, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you're on very little paint and uh, very little. Uh, application on on the fur. Next, we're gonna uh, do a bit of a highlighting on the werewolf skin. Uh, this is the the probably the most time-consuming process. We're gonna do it in, in a couple of stages. Uh, initially, we're gonna start with the original color mix of the. Uh, kiss the flesh and serve them in fear and we apply uh, mainly on those uh, top uh, areas uh, again uh, try to avoid you know covering the recesses uh, we we applied uh, that uh, dilute uh, noon oil just to cover those recesses a little bit further and we want to keep the we want to keep them uh, darker so we paint over majority of our skin uh, and try not to go too far with the recesses As I have mentioned earlier on, we're gonna be uh, doing this in a couple of stages. Uh, each time we will be adding a bit more 
uh, oh, the Kisla Flash, some more kind of a skin tone color. And again, we will be applying a bit uh, less uh, paint on our model. We cover the less uh, with every brighter uh, tone uh, we, uh, we're gonna apply. Again, make sure you know you have the right consistency of your paint, make sure you know it's thin correctly and using just a tip of your brush uh, we covering the, the the small areas i want to have a bit of a texture of those uh, muscles as well so i did apply the kind of like a tiny we uh, tiny we lines blended together rather than you know covering the whole lot with the with the big brush Again, you know, try to be uh, precise and as neat as possible, you know, correction at this point might be a bit uh, difficult and annoying. So just, you know, take your time, don't rush and, uh, and trying to uh, do it with as much precision as possible, especially, you know, like the finger uh, bones. Uh, you know the face uh, might uh, require that uh, extra caution and as you can see now we uh, i add a bit more of kisla flash and apply another layer on those exposed uh, top areas of the brighter uh, of the brighter tone just remember with the final layer uh, uh, not to go uh, too much with it, you know, just the small touches here and there, just to put a bit of a contrast uh, uh, will do the job. Uh, we do not uh, want to overload with that uh, bright uh, tone, it's just to, to uh, increase the contrast and highlight those most exposed areas. Once the skin is done, then we're gonna uh, do a bit of a highlighting with uh, the wee skirt. And uh, we start obviously with the same uh, color uh, our, that, that we painted initially, which was the scrap brown. Uh, and again, we, uh, within the, uh, the paint bits, and we're trying to avoid painting the uh, the recesses uh, we're gonna use the valor brown uh, to add to our original scrag brown just to achieve the, the you know the mid and the final tone uh, of that uh, of that uh, brown as you can see I'm painting you know mainly those uh, edges and close to the edges and those uh, big exposed parts we add a bit more of the scrag brown uh, and again we're painting in a couple of stages uh, we're covering less and less with every layer as usual and then at the at the very end we're just gonna do a bit of a uh, <coughs> a bit of a pure uh, scrag brown on uh, the on the on the edges as well, just for the more contrast.
Now we're gonna switch back to our XV88 and we're gonna do a bit of a uh, highlighting on the Wii roping. And again, uh, in the next step, we're gonna add a bit of a screening school and do a bit of a further highlighting with this uh, brighter tone. And now with the pure screaming school we'll do a bit of uh, highlighting on the bandage on uh, on his uh, uh, right leg and again we do it uh, very gently we don't want to cover it too much there is a couple of recesses there that are nicely covered with the with the gray and for the further highlight on the top uh, we're gonna add a bit of a uh, white to our screaming school and just do a couple touches of that uh, of that higher tone uh, at this point we also gonna uh, touch again uh, our uh, our uh, feet and just uh, just the edge of that rope and maybe a tiny bit on the knot as well uh, now for the uh, for the wee stripes uh, i've made i used our previous uh, rhinox height uh, with the uh, with the rapston glove uh, and we add in a tiny bit of the uh, of the uh, valor brown, and again in a couple of stages by adding more and more of the uh, valor brown, we're gonna uh, highlight all those uh, leather uh, stripes. Again, we not cover the whole lot. We're trying to you know to. Uh, to do a kind of like a contrast from what we have before so uh, at our final stage we're just gonna put some lines on the edges uh, with a very very uh, much baller brown in our mix Our next step, we're gonna uh, do a bit of highlighting of that uh, red stripe on his uh, arm. So initially, we're gonna do it with our original color, which was the Mephiston red. And again, you know, we not cover the whole lot. Uh, just be gentle with it and touch here and there uh, with it. Leave the recesses uh, dark. And once you're happy with the first layer, we're gonna apply uh, some uh, Wild Rider Red. First of all, we're gonna mix it over with uh, with the Mephiston Red, uh, just to blend it nicely. And uh, in our final stage, we're gonna uh, be applying the pure uh, Wild Rider Red here and there. Uh, just a small uh, patches, a bit of an edges uh, that we not uh, that the bow is tight, uh, tightened on the arm. Uh, just, just to put a bit nice contrast on that. And then we're gonna switch over uh, to the tongue. So again, after our red tone wash dries off we apply a wee bit of of the pure uh, bookman's glow and again uh, once 
that done we gonna mix a little bit of the screaming skull to the bugman's glow and do a tiny uh, highlights on the tongue uh, now we're gonna uh, get a bit of a rapstone glow mixed with medium i want to have a kind of like a wash consistency and we apply on the eye holes of our werewolf with our previous uh, kind of uh, uh, pretty much white uh, uh, eyeballs if we apply a bit of a green uh, it will give us that nice and greenish wolf eyes effect now as you can see i got a uh, lead belcher uh, which is the kind of uh, like a dark uh, steel uh, color and we apply all the metal uh, parts uh, there is uh, a couple of them uh, joining the uh, the leather stripes there is also a couple of studs uh, here and there uh, so just with the tiny fine uh, brush cover them the whole lot Now our next step we're gonna switch over the typhus corrosion and we're gonna paint it over with this technical paint the, the soil around the rock that, uh, that he stand on. And then I switched back to our uh, mix that we used previously for the, uh, for the clubs, uh, which was the Sotte Green and Abaddon Black. And uh, again, we're gonna do it in a couple of stages. So uh, in our uh, every next layer, we will be adding a bit more uh, Sotte Green. Uh, so uh, we're gonna co do a kind of like a you know transition from the very kind of black uh, cloths on one side to the kind of like a turquoise blue uh, uh, on the other we want to have that kind of like a shine effect by using that turquoise blue uh, also using this tone to put a bit of a, uh, a different color on the on the nose and inside uh, his uh, ears. German grey is my standard color for the rims for uh, this line of monsters. Uh, so again, you might apply two layers of that. And then we use in the, the mix uh, of the grass, 2.5 millimeter, the very short one. Uh, but we'll wait a bit until you know the the uh, the rim will uh, dries off completely in the meantime i decide to put a bit of a silver uh, highlighting on the metal uh, parts the silver was from the vallejo and just applying the grass put a bit of a pva glue whatever you want the grass and just applies uh, the grass heavily uh, stick it uh, down uh, to the glue and then by using all one of your old brushes remove the excess and give a shape to the grass uh, so it will uh, stand firmly I put one of the bushes uh, as well and a bit of a, a flowers to the base just to have that kind of like a spring uh, spring field uh, a wee bit of the blood, obviously it's a werewolf, so uh, it's no harm to put a bit of uh, blood maybe on his arm as I did and a few drops on that rock and the grass as well. So our werewolf is fully painted and ready to play. I hope you did uh, enjoy this video, I hope you like that uh, painted mini. If so, please give the thumb up and uh, of course don't forget to subscribe the channel if you haven't do so and uh, i hope to see you uh, at my uh, next clips uh, just to let you know as well the list of the paints that i used uh, for this mini is at the end of the video 
So again, thanks for watching and I should see you next time. Bye now.